Welcome to this session on Payment to Research Participants. I am Dr. Banureka from the National Institute for Research in Tuberculosis. So, the objectives of this lecture is to describe the benefits and ethical concerns of payment to research participants, what are the different types of payment that can be offered to the study participants and what do the guidelines say on payment to research participants, the role of ethics committee in reviewing payments and the considerations for investigators to offer payment to the study participants. So, what is payment? The concept of payment is an umbrella term that is used in instances in which money which is either in the form of cash or cash equivalent uh, that is medical services other than what is offered in research or food uh, for example is provided to research participants. So, payment can be in the form of incentives, compensation or reimbursement. And uh, the concept of payment is a source of substantial de debate as far as research is concerned because the idea of whether payment by itself have to be given to research participants or if it is justifiable, uh, what is the correct amount of money that has to be offered or in what form it has to be provided, at which time of research it should be provided and what is the modality that it should be given. So, these are all very, uh, uh, very grey areas as far as research, uh, research uh, subject uh, enrollment or retention is concerned. And moreover, there is limited guidi guidance on the offer of payment. Uh, to study participants by investigators or the review of payments uh, that is to be offered in research by ethics committees. So, what are the ethical concerns of payment in research? So, people argue that it could dilute the altruistic motivation uh, of the research uh, participant. So, uh, the altruistic motivation implies that uh, patient, uh, the participant takes part in research with a selfless motive for the benefit of science. So, this would dilute the altruistic motivation. The study sample would be compromised with those financially vulnerable. This implies that uh, because the economically disadvantaged people would find it uh, uh, more attractive to take part in the study because of payment, your study sample would compromise uh, will be compromised with more of those kind of population. And uh, people argue that it could violate, violate the ethical norms of investigator participant relationship by turning it commercial. So, investigator is offering money. So, the relationship becomes a commercial entity. And not only that, it could lead to a disproportionate research burden on poor or the economically disadvantaged people violating the principle of justice. So, principle of justice is uh, as far as research is concerned is equal distribution of fair selection of subjects, uh, study participants and uh, uh, distribution of burden and benefits fairly. So, if more of poor or economically advantaged are taking part in research, then this violates the principle of justice. And the ethical concern of payment, another very important aspect is the aspect of undue inducement. So, what is this uh, coercion and undue indu inducement? So, coercion refers to a threat of physical or psychological or social harm in order to compel an individual to do something such as participate in research. So, there is an element of harm that is involved as far as coercion is concerned and the payment as such is not perceived as a coercion. So, uh, in terms of the ethical concerns, it is more of a whether it is an undue inducement or not. Though undue inducement is not well defined, Undue influence refers to an offer of an excessive or inappropriate reward in order to obtain compliance. So, compliance in this case refers to uh, participate, uh, make them participate in the research project. So, uh, you offer something that is excessive that it attracts them and uh, the people come to participate in research. And this inducement is seemed undue. So, uh, such so much so that it is attractive that it can blind the prospective uh, study participants to potential risks or impair their ability to exercise proper judgment. So, all that they can see is the amount of money that is offered as uh, for enrollment into the study. 
So, uh, they do not have a fair judgment of risk and benefit which compromises the informed consent process. So, as far as ethical concern is payment is concerned, uh, one should determine whether it is an undue inducement or not for the research participant to take part in the research. So, the concerns about undue inducement in research. So, as I mentioned earlier, it can lead to incomplete assessment of risk by study participants. So, uh, the study participants uh, are supposed to understand the risks and benefits uh, the research has to offer and then take a voluntary decision to participate in research. So, this would compromise the informed consent. And uh, on the other hand, it could also uh, make them conceal information if known would disqualify from them enrollment. For example, a uh, study among uh, new pulmonary TB patients. So, we would enroll patients without history of previous anti TB treatment. So, if the patient uh, prefers to conceal that kind of an information. Um, uh, because uh, he is very much attracted to the money that is being offered uh, as an incentive to take part in the study, then this could jeopardize the safety of the subject as well as it could uh, uh, affect the quality and in the interpretation of data. So, uh, the undue inducement can lead to these two uh, most important uh, aspects as far as research is concerned and uh, one should be very careful in reviewing uh, payments so that this does not cause an undue inducement and compromise the informed consent as well as the quality of research. What are the different models of payment? So, there are four main models of payment. So, first is the market model. So, the payment modality is an incentive and the amount is determined by the supply and demand market rate. So, the amount of payment is de de determined by market value that is necessary to recruit the study participants in a given frame of time. If the uh, research involves a rare condition or characteristics uh, uh, in the sense that it is very uh, difficult to uh, identify or uh, uh, locate potential study participants, then the money offered would be more. If many people are willing to participate in the research, no money would be offered or it would be less. The next is a wage payment model where the payment modality is uh, compensation and the amount is determined by standardized wage for time and effort that is a wage of a uh, wage equivalent to that of for an unskilled job. So, the time and the loss of wages is uh, compensated in this wage payment model. The other model is a reimbursement model where the expenses that are actually incurred by the uh, study participants um, in order to avoid them uh, avoid the financial sacrifice by participating in the trial the actual costs of the food travel and stay are reimbursed. The other final model is the appreciation model where reward is often of offered as a token of appreciation at the end of study or at the time points where critical uh, study outcomes are uh, attained. So, uh, the market model where the payment modality is an incentive. So, the justification for this model comes from the recruitment of study participants is vital for research and incentives help in timely recruitment of adequate study participants. So, timely recruitment of adequate study participants is very important since there are many studies which fail to recruit in a particular time and or either they get terminated because adequate participants are not enrolled. So, this would uh, lead to underpowered studies and uh, uh, that, that would be a waste of resources from the investigator side as well as the participants that have been previously enrolled into the study. So, the positive effect of this incentive model is uh, the, the it helps in um, improving the recruitment and the completion bonus is useful for subject retention. So, recruitment and retention are two most important aspects in research. So, by offering completion bonuses for subject retention this model is very uh, effective and this uh, incentive model is particularly useful if research offers no 
or little benefit to study participants, but involves risky or uncomfortable procedures. Uh, such that research done in healthy volunteers where uh, the volunteers themselves do not have any benefit from that, uh, but they are uh, exposed to drug levels to study the safety of the drugs that are going to be used in subsequent uh, uh, patients. So, uh, when or if the uh, research involves very few people who are eligib eligible to participate in this study, uh, research on rare conditions or rare characteristics and this causes, uh, this has little or no financial sacrifice for participants. While the negative effect include, uh, there would be undue inducement. So, participants, the most important attractive feature would be the money. So, the participants would come and take part in research and this would lead to competition between studies. Better funded studies which offer more incentives likely to meet the recruitment goals and there is different levels of payment at different sites in multicentric uh, uh, trials. So, what is applicable for a de uh, developed country? Uh, the amount may not be applicable in a developing country. Uh, the next uh, pay, uh, is the wage payment model where the modality of payment is the commons compensation. So, this, this is based on the principle that uh, people have to be fairly compensated for the time they give for the research and for their willingness to accept research related burdens. So, participants in research, uh, participating in research requires time, effort and endurance of uncomfortable procedure. And so, payment should be uh, equated to that of an unskilled or essential job augmented by increase for uncomfortable or burdensome procedures. Here, it is equated to a case of employment where um, the people should be treated fairly and uh, avoided exploitation. So, the possible uh, positive effect include that it recognizes the contribution of participants. So, uh, by offering uh, compensation, uh, we understand uh, that uh, their uh, time and uh, their uh, effort and participation in research is very valued and there is uniform payment across studies because it is standardized and there is equal pay for equal work and there is less risk of undue inducement. While the negative uh, effect may include, it, it would have little impact on recruitment because, uh, because it is standardized and the money would not be that attractive and it might undercompensate some participants in relation to regular wage and prefer preferentially attract others. So, uh, suppose a study participant would be earning only about uh, 100 rupees per day and the study offers a compensation of uh, rupees 150 for study related visits. In that way, it would attract him while for a person who is going to earn 200 or 250 per day, it would be a uh, under compensation for him. The next is the reimbursement model where participants in research should uh, which is based on the fact that participants in research should not uh, uh, have a financial sacrifice by participating uh, in study related procedures. So, uh, this, so whatever they have spent as part of uh, uh, coming to the hospital or undergoing the study related procedure, they would be uh, reimbursed in actuals. So, this makes a research participant revenue neutral. So, whatever they spend, they get it back and there is little risk of uh, uh, inducement. Um, and uh, the negative effect would be that there is little impact on recruitment. Uh, there would be uneven distribution uh, reimbursement among study participants. So, uh, some would take a different modality of transport like a bus to the, uh, to the institution or an uh, 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 for example, a car or an auto to the institution. So, the costs vary accordingly to that and the, so, the, uh, there is uneven distribution among the study participants in terms of re in, uh, reimbursement. Uh, the financial sacrifice to participants would be there if laws of wages are not reimbursed. So, we would only reimburse what is in terms of uh, actuals for travel or the food, we collect the bill from them and settle them. So, loss of wages in that uh, ways cannot be reimbursed. 
The next is the appreciation model or the reward model where the participant in uh, which is based on the principle that the participant in research need to be appreciated for their contribution. So, uh, the positive effect is we express gratitude for the contribution made and there is no undue inducement in that and uh, this helps to achieve critical endpoints in research by ensuring participant retention. So, if you uh, feel that at 2 months a uh, most important blood test or a uh, critical endpoint needs to be used. Uh, achieved. So, at the time of the 2 months when we offer this kind of a reward this would help in participant retention. While this has no impact on recruitment it may compromise withdrawal from study from the perspective of participant. So, as far as research is concerned we inform the study participants they have the right to withdraw from the trial at any uh, withdraw from the study in which they are involved at any time point. So, uh, this would compromise their thought of withdrawing from the study because uh, they would be waiting for receiving, receiving that kind of uh, uh, reward at that particular time point which is promised to them. So, what are the benefits of payment and research? So, this would help in recruitment of study participants like I mentioned earlier especially incentives this would uh, help in rec uh, uh, achieving the participant recruitment within the uh, planned time frame. This would enable participation in research because it could reduce the financial sacrifice uh, that is endured by the patients. It recognizes the contribution of patients towards research and this decreases therapeutic misconception. So, what is therapeutic misconception? So, there is a difference between clinical care and research. So, uh, if patients are included uh, as par as study participants, uh, they, uh, they understand it primarily as clinical care that is offered by the investigator to them rather than research though it is explained in detail to them. So, that is known as therapeutic misconception. So, in clinical care normally the patient uh, pays to the uh, care provider or to the doctor. Uh, while in research it is the other way around where the investigator uh, pays the study participant. So, in that base this would decrease the therapeutic misconception from the study participant side. So, what do the regulations and guidelines uh, talk about payment related to research? So, the Nuremberg code the early uh, 1940s uh, has told that a uh, person involved should be able to ex in research should be ex should be able to exercise free power of choice without the intervention of any element of coercion. The Belmont report says that the element of informed consent requires condition free of coercion and undue influence. We saw the difference between coercion and undue influence earlier where uh, in this case payment would uh, more uh, uh, be appropriate for the undue influence or undue inducement. Inducements that would ordinarily be acceptable may become undue influence if the study subject is especially vulnerable. The declaration of Helsinki says the protocol should include information regarding incentives for study participants and it should be submitted for consideration and approval to an IRB. The SIOMS international guidelines for biomedical research mentions that research participants should be reasonably reimbursed for costs directly incurred during research uh, like the travel costs and compensated reasonably for the inconvenience and time spent. So, the compensation can be monetary or non-monetary in, in, uh, in the form of free health services unrelated to research, medical insurance, education materials or other benefits. So, the compensation should not be large as to induce potential participants to consent to participate in research against their better judgment or in other words undue inducement. The ICMR 2017 National Ethical Guidelines for Biomedical and Health Research mentions that if applicable participants may be reimbursed for expenses incurred relating to their participation in research such as travel related expenses and they should be paid for their inconvenience incurred, time spent and other incidental expenses in either cash or kind or both as, see, as deemed necessary in terms of loss of wages or food supplies. So, the guidelines uh, uh, the recent ICMR guidelines also encourages payment to study participants. 
the participant should not be made to pay for expenses which are incurred beyond routine clinical care and which are re research related which include investigations, patient workup or any uh, intervention or associated treatment. The guidelines further emphasize that participants who suffer from direct physical, psychological, social, legal, economic harm as a result of their participation are entitled to financial or other assistance. In case of death, their dependents are entitled to financial compensation. So, uh, you must have had a lecture on the, the compensation for trial or uh, related injury or death where there is a detailed uh, modality of calculation of uh, uh, financial compensation or medical management to those who are entitled. So, there should be budgetary provision for insurance cover and or compensation and this is the responsibility of the investigator and sponsor and the ethics committee has to make sure that this is in place. So, compensation in injury in case of clinical trial subject free medical management as long as required or till such time it is established that the injury is not related to clinical trial whichever is earlier has to be offered. The financial compensation over and above any expenses incurred on medical management has to be provided. In case of no permanent injury the quantum of compensation shall be commensurate with the nature of non-permanent injury and loss of wages. So, uh, like I mentioned earlier there would have been a detailed ses uh, session on the compensation in case of injury to clinical trial uh, subjects. So, this, this is a responsibility of ethics committee and they need to be aware of uh, these uh, financial compensation and free medical management in case of uh, clinical trial related injury. Payment in research involving vulnerable population. So, vulnerable population uh, pre uh, would have been explained to you in detail in previous sessions or lectures. So, in case of vulnerable population, the onus lies on the legally authorized representative to give consent on behalf of a participant. So, paying them should not be an undue inducement and this should be carefully reviewed by the ethics committee. So, reimbursements can be offered to them for travel or other incidental uh, charge, uh, charges may be provided for the uh, participation of their child or ward in the research and free medical services can be provided to the study participants. So, one has to be very careful and review uh, uh, payments especially when the study population is vulnerable and when legally authorized representatives are entitled to give consent on their behalf. So, what are the modalities of review of payment by ethics committee? So, there, uh, there are no steadfast guidelines that are mentioned uh, for this kind of review of payment, but uh, it is very important the discussion of payment should arise only after a careful risk benefit assessment of study is found and is uh, done and the study is found to be ethically acceptable to be uh, carried out. So, ethics committee should not consider payment as a benefit to offset research risk and not only ethics committee even the investigator should not have that kind of an attitude. So, the ethics committee in its review of payment should consider potential vulnerabilities of uh, targeted study pop, uh, population especially when it involves uh, vulnerable population, the eligibility criteria for enrollment into the study. So, the screening plans, the proposed methods for assessing the study participants knowledge of risks and their uh, ability to make voluntary autonomous decisions and should take into consideration the lo prevailing local norms in deciding the payments to the study participants. So, the uh, ethics committee should view it with an open mind uh, in the way that study participant and recruitment, uh, uh, recruitment and retention is very important aspect as far as research is concerned and the patients should not be made to uh, undergo a financial sacrifice. So, the payment should not be an undue inducement and not only that they should ensure that the study participants uh, knowledge of risks and ability to make a voluntary autonomous decision for study partic participation into the trial uh, is adequately taken care of by the investigators to uh, ensure that 
um, they are not taking part in research only because of the payment that is offered uh, by the investigators. The ethics committee should review justification and plans for payment. So, uh, when the in investigator explains the rationale for payment to the study participants, whether the payment would be offered in the end or during the study visits or at the initial part during recruitment. So, all these modalities and the time of payment has to be reviewed with proper justification by ethics committee and they at every stage should determine that this amount does not do uh, this does not amount to undue inducement and ethics committee should ascertain the source and means of compensation for study related injury. So, uh, like I mentioned earlier, it is a responsibility of the uh, institution investigator and sponsor to ensure that uh, adequate funding source is available for compensation for trial related injury and uh, they must also review the relatedness of the serious adverse event to research and the uh, onus on determining the quantum and type of assistance to be provided to participants is now with the ethics committee. So, uh, that is a very important job that ethics committee members have to follow uh, while reviewing compensation for study related injury. And uh, the ethics committee has to review presentation of information about payments and consent documents, the wordings that are there in the participant information sheet, whether it could uh, uh, falsely uh, uh, I mean kind of lure uh, participants into research and related advertisements uh, as far as recruitment uh, plans and incentives is concerned for recruiting study uh, participants. They should approve the payment in cash or kind or both and free services and processes that are involved in that. They have to recognize the positive ethical reasons in favor of payment that are based on fairness to participants and the importance of trial completion. And it is suggested that ethics committees develop standard operating procedures on the types of expenses and amounts that are considered reasonable for reimbursement based on local norms. Now, that is for uh, the review of payment by ethics committee members. Now, investigators also have to have certain considerations uh, while offering payment to their study participant. So, it is uh, suggested that they itemize the payment. So, whether it is reimbursement, compensation or incentive and communicate the rationale and justification uh, while presenting to the IRB. So, reimbursement for out of pocket expenses, compensation for time and burdens and if recruitment incentive is being offered. And it is better that they focus on reimbursement and compensation before incentive payments because incentive payment is, is by itself is actually a, a matter of debate as far as, as the form of uh, payment is to be provided for study participants. The plan to reimburse participants for out of pocket expenses have to be very clear in their proposal to IRB and uh, it is uh, uh, felt to be appropriate that investigators consult with IRB on the types of expenses and amount considered reasonable for reimbursement without causing undue inducement. The investigators uh, should uh, 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 reveal to the IRB the options for insurance coverage for participants and uh, the, the financial plan for that uh, for, fin for financial protection for research related injury. So, like I mentioned earlier, it is a responsibility of the investigator and sponsor to have that amount of money for compensating trial uh, study related injury. The investigators should also have mechanism to increase safeguards around participant comprehension and informed consent and they should include measures to assess comprehension as appropriate. Like after uh, giving explaining the, to the patient about the uh, study related procedures or the risks and benefits of the study, they could include uh, something like a test of understanding about uh, uh, how much the participant had uh, understood about the risks and benefits. So, this would ensure that the participant has a thorough uh, knowledge about the risks and benefits of participating in this research and then has taken a voluntary uh, consent to participate and not because of the 
payment in any kind that is offered as part of research. So, these are the reading resources material that are available for this uh, session on payment. Uh, so, thank you for your attention for this session. Thank you.